Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of round 13 in the most exciting league in Europe. Yes, we still have five teams only separated by a single point. However, if you've only watched Milan against Juve, yeah, the moniker of most exciting league in Europe might be a little bit weird. That, that was a snooze fest, absolute snooze fest, I gotta say. What a dross and it doesn't make any sense because the five teams ahead of Milan and Juve all won. At the time only Inter had won, but both teams needed the win and that Milan were not pressing for it because they are in a much harder situation is really something that I will not understand for the life of it. Even for Juve, I guess with the injuries that they have, it was probably a good draw for them. But enough of that stuff, we'll talk about it a little bit later in a more detailed recap of that game. I thought there was really not much to recap. The exciting part of the league is of course that we have five teams up top. I think three are potential Serie A contenders. I'm not sure about Fiorentina and Lazio, although Fiorentina is on a seven game winning streak. <laughs> Ever since they've beaten Milan, they only have one way. Win, 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 win. Pretty exciting stuff. Question is how long they can they keep it up and same doubts about Lazio. We'll talk about Inter, Napoli and Atalanta in a little bit because I think those are the contenders. It's also tight on the bottom. But before we go into the review of the games, we also have some coaching news during the international break. We already knew that Juric was fired by Roma. He is replaced by Ranieri. It was a matter of the heart that he came out of retirement for his beloved Roma. Actually a great move by the Fritkins to placate a very riotous fan base at the moment. But they should not be let off the hook. This was just another bone to throw to the fans like De Rossi was after they fired Mourinho. And it's easier to let Ranieri go than De Rossi and you will not even give him a new contract because simply put this guy wants to retire was a little bit more solid didn't get a win but I actually think that it will steer Roma to its mid table however Europe is probably a uh too much of a challenge at this moment. And then another rather spicy appointment. Giladino got sacked at Genoa and they anointed Patrick Vieira. Why is it spicy? Because they also just got Balotelli in and those two don't really see eye to eye in previous stations like at Nice where Balotelli said himself he would have stayed longer there if it wasn't for Patrick Vieira. Let's see how they will get on in Italy. <music> What can I tell you? Milan dropped more points in a nil-nil draw at home against Juventus in a game that you really needed to win, especially after you dropped those points in Cagliari. And while the Cagliari game was super entertaining, except if you're a Milan fan, this one was a little bit more a bore fest because both teams really made a defensive masterclass out of that. And honestly, I gotta say, for most of the time, I felt that Juventus are the more solid, more dangerous team. The team that is the better team. Very late on in the first half, I think it was the first chance for Milan with an Emerson header where that kind of places it and Amazon is anyway a signing that I still don't quite understand and then in the second half you get your first shot on goal with the last shot of the game yes I think in the last 20 minutes or so Milan had more of the initiative because they knew they needed to win this game but more than long range shots by Reinders free kick over the bar Fofana over the bar and that header by Theo Nandes there was really not much coming from Milan and Juve actually had the best chance when I think early in the second half Kenan Yildiz shot got blocked at could have gone in, but really overall not much. I would say you were for most of the game the better team. Late on there was a surge by Milan. You always had the feeling that Milan might break now and might go with all the attack in mind, you know, Theo Hernandez and Rafa Leao. But you were like the rock with when the surf hits the rock. That that's how they stood tall there. And in the end it ends in a nil-nil draw. Definitely a better result for Juve. Inter started off the weekend in a resounding manner, winning 5-0 at Elas Verona and all goals coming in the first half to boot. It was also the Correa Turam show. Correa, where did he come from? That was kind of surprising. He opens the scoring, then he assists Turam on the second one, he also assists the fifth one by Bisek, which was kind of funny as goal because he scored in a rather weird manner, lying on the floor and still got it in the corner up there so really good stuff the scary thing about Inter is that they can rest players and still are keeping up with the rest of the league I think we will see that in the second part of the season Inter will just kick into the next gear and everyone goodbye also weird was that up until Correa's opener 
the game was actually even. Verona had chances, but then there were no chances for Verona anymore. While Inter has to be considered the favorite, I think Atalanta is ready to mount a challenge for a Serie A title. With Lukman, Ederson and Retegi, they have a front duo that is really, really good. They all three scored in the 3-1 win at Parma. Cancelleri made it a little bit tighter for a while, but overall this was all Atalanta. Curiously enough, Atalanta were playing in yellow, which is a color that I always associate with Parma a little bit more. But that's beside the point, I would say. Atalanta is really one of the most exciting teams. The other thing, of course, is can Gasparini keep it together? Because for all his great stuff that he does as a coach, he's very volatile. And if he's missing on the sideline, I'm not sure how often this will help him. He got sent off in this one. Patrick Vieira's debut against Cagliari only ended in a 2-2 draw at home. The turn it around after we're down through a Marin goal, Fendro Miretti scoring, but then very late on a piccoli penalty salvages a point for Cagliari. One of the surprise teams so far have to be Fiorentina. They are in a really good run at the moment. They get another win at 2-0 at Como, Yasin Adli and who else? Moise can scoring. But it also needed De Gea who had some great saves in this one too. I think Fiorentina is a solid side. However, I'm not sure how long they can hang with the top teams. And it's another disappointing result for Torino. Only 1-1 at home at Monza. Great start to the season but ever since... Meh, and this is typically Torino. It's a side that actually has the potential for at least a top half finish. Maybe even in Europe but now not happening. Claudio Ranieri's debut at Napoli ended in a 1-0 defeat. However, Ranieri did something that you would expect from an Italian coach. He kind of made it all a little bit more solid, a little bit more defensive 4-4-1-1. Napoli did have their trouble, but it was kind of a battle of attrition when Napoli you know, chop, 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 and then Di Lorenzo passes it in to Lukaku, who gets another important goal in a kind of a big game after having a rather rough spell before that. Last time he scored was unfortunately against Milan. Also has to be said that this squad that he's not playing, there were eight title winners in there. So he's just adding a little touch here and there he had already a pretty good squad. Lazio is another really surprised team. We have said it almost every week. Marco Baroni doing a great job after he did this great job at Elos Verona last season. However, this 3-0 over Bologna was very much conditioned by an S9 red card for Pobega. On a yellow card, he charges Guendouzi in the opposing box. What do you want? Now with 10 men, Bologna actually seemed like they might hold out. But then Gigo gets the go-ahead goal after Dia had already a goal disallowed just a few minutes before. Then Zakani adds a second and then there was only one winner late on Dele Bashiru adds a third for Lazio who is still riding high in the table. In the early Monday game Pellegri gave Empoli the lead but Udinese hang on and they managed to get a 1-1 draw thanks to a Davies equalizer while Lecce get a very vital 1-0 win at Venezia. Venezia still down in the doldrums. Storico scoring the 70th minute in a rather tight game. Now, as far as excitement goes, the table, like last week, makes for great reading for any fan. We have five teams separated by a single point, Napoli one point ahead, and then four teams on 28 points. However, as I said already in the intro and during the review, I'm not sure if Fiorentina and Lazio will keep it up despite their two coaches doing a really good job. However, Atalanta, if they can keep up their form, could be a potential challenger. They are one of the most exciting teams to watch in Europe. They have a great forward line. They have a very wily coach. Consistency, consistency. But I would love to see Atalanta win another big title, a domestic title for once. I think they won a cup back in the 60s and that was it. After the work that Gasparini has done, they would deserve to get a Serie A title. Realistically though, it is between Napoli and Inter. The pro for Napoli is you give Conte a week to work on every day to prepare for the next game, which is perfect for Conte to get his squad in shape. They don't have European commitments. They may have a Coppa Italia thrown in here and there, but that's about it. And they have quite experienced players. This weekend, Conte played eight title winners. So I think the core for a really good title challenge is there. But then there is Inter, the deepest squad in the league. And I gotta say, Inter look really, really scary. I think Inter will actually aim for the Champions League this season, but if they get a league title along the way, yeah, they will take it, of course, as well. It's really damning for a Milan fan. I mean, if I look at the table now, Juventus and Milan, 
one of those might miss out on Europe and it's more likely Milan than it is Juventus unless the Italians get a whole more spots as well and there's also Coppa Italia in there. Milan wanted to win the title this season. Maybe a Coppa Italia is in there but I don't see them really winning a Coppa Italia with their history in that competition and if you see now they have a 10 point gap to Napoli and already a 9 point gap to the Champions League spots. Yes with a game in hand but that game is at Bologna. Not an easy one, it's not a foregone conclusion that you get three points there. Maybe the schedule will ease up for Milan now a little bit, but I still don't fancy them getting these points because it's against the big teams that Milan typically perform better. It will be a rough season, transition season. And as much as I do like what Fonseca has been showing, especially at Roma and a little bit now at Milan, I think he did also great work at Lille. They need to get a run together, otherwise it will be a rough season for Milan and Fonseca will see the door sooner than later. The outstanding fixture of the next round is of course Fiorentina hosting Inter. It's again a six o'clock kickoff. I really don't like it because I will not be able to see it because I'm watching Lusk in Linz against Austria Vienna. But I really want to see whether Fiorentina can continue their winning streak against Inter or will it be a draw? Will Inter after Champions League commitment come back? But Fiorentina also play in the Conference League so they have even a shorter preparation time for that one. Milan play Empoli at home. Should be an easy game. No, it is not because Empoli is a rather solid side there. I think also Roma against Atalanta will be interesting because that's not only a rivalry, but Roma a little bit more solid. Atalanta can really show some great stuff. Will tell us a little bit about Atalanta. You will have to go to Lecce. I also think Parma Lazio. I mean, this gives me 90s vibes, although Parma is unfortunately not that good. Napoli probably should get the win at Torino. It was a fluke that Torino won against Napoli last season. Yeah, fluke because Napoli were really, really, really bad. That's the fluke. So that was it. My thoughts on Serie A at the moment. I focus a little bit more on the top than on the bottom, but the bottom is also quite exciting where there's also quite a few teams that could get relegated almost to the mid-table point. I think everything Parma down, but yeah. Sorry that I didn't talk about that. We'll do better next time around. In any case, please let me know your thoughts on Serie A in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. Talk to you soon about more things in my Serie A universe. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.